part two. Take now. Okay, so if Candy Wild Pig's story was canon, the adults who ran the orphanage may have found the dead children eventually and most likely buried them in land not far from the orphanage and claimed the sauce then used on him and his brother, buried them, and took all of the tools from the shed and hit the road as if nothing happened. So basically, Mr. Mumbles randomly shows up and finds these kids' graves. Let's see. Yeah, to find these kids' graves uh, and tries his best to bring them back. At first, it did not work, but soon after, the kids woke or wake up, but are unable to remember much. And since they all see Mr. Mumbles for the first time, they sort of view him as their father, and so he renames them all and sort of watches over them all. Now, earlier... I was pointing out how Mr. Mumbles moved in at night, correct? Well, what if I said he was the reason the power plant accident took place? He is the mad scientist type after all, so if so, maybe he too died during that tragic day, which explains why he came to Glimsville at night and not during the day. It could explain how he also learned of the orphans as well vowing to use his mad scientist skills one last time before retiring and moving on to making rides and bringing joy to the world sound familiar see the bright side of the dark side so in conclusion they are they are the children who died but reanimated to look like cartoons to those who viewed view the show they inspired their cartoon counterparts but also happened to be them the last thing is this. Mr. Mumbles uh, makes the children believe they are still alive to hide the guilt he has for being the reason they all died. To explain why Scaredy Bat or Poe are talking animals but not Doom Kitty could be because Mr. Mumbles drugged them so they would never see the reality before them, which is why they see the rundown orphanage as a pretty well-made mansion and why Frank and Lynn see the tool supply shed as a normal garage. Last, lastly, I'd like to end this theory on the fact the house is on a tree branch. Knowing Misery has lightning that follows her quite a lot makes me wonder how it doesn't strike the branch sending the house crashing. It dawned on me. This was symbolism. It is explaining how the kids were on the verge of death but were too oblivious to notice. They were too oblivious to know what danger they were in and then it happened. So what do you think of this theory, guys? If you like it, let me know and tell me in the comments below. If I overanalyzed, please heavens let me know because sometimes when I get into a theory mode, I go way deep in and sometimes it's hard to get back out of my own daggum grave. No pun intended here, but you know, being a person who just got into Rim Ruby Glim myself in 2017, I kind of feel really down and sad about not knowing about the cartoon's existence, and even more sad to find out that it got canceled before season three could become a thing. But it does have two seasons, at least. Season one can be found on Netflix if you're interested. Season one and two full episodes uploaded by Gloomy Ruby is can be found.